Good day and welcome to A-Level Physics. We're going to look at Coulomb's Law, Part 2 of Chapter 23. So uh, we have in Chapter 8 looked at the concept of electric field. Electric field is a field that of a force and can be represented by field lines. Okay, so we had two formulas that we looked at. Firstly, we looked at the electric field strength at a point is the force per unit charge that acts on that stationary point and this was for any um, any any due to any charge okay so it can be a parallel plate or a, uh, uh, just a random point charge in the middle of nowhere okay so we know that the field strength is the force divided by the charge okay then we looked at electric field also stating that it's uniform between two uh, it's a uniform field between parallel charge plates and that the electric field strength is equal to the potential difference divided by the separation okay so two formulas for electric field strength either force per charge or potential difference per separation okay just a revision of chapter 8 now in chapter 9 we're going to look at the electric field strength for radial field okay and then we looked at the formula for the the force okay electric static force for a radial um for a point charge okay and now we'll use that so we know that it's force per charge and if we substitute that into coulomb's law we're going to get k q over r squared or if we use the alternate formula q over 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared that's another constant in the space of k for the rest of this calculation or this presentation i will be referring to k instead of the other formula okay so in a radial electric field any two charges exert a force on one on each other attractive if they are opposite and repulsive if they are like charges Around any charge, we can imagine an invisible field okay, of force, similar to gravitational field, which is an area of space in which a charge experiences a force. So if we think about this positive test charge here, um, point charge, positive point charge, if I bring a positive test charge close to it, it will be repelled in all directions perpendicular to where the point charge is okay so what you'll see here is the field lines and these field lines indicate the direction of the force acting on a positive charge um, placed in the field the field strength hence the okay hence force increases as you move closer to the charge so the field lines get closer to each other Okay, so we see that the field lines, the green equipotential lines, get closer to each other because the field gets stronger. The closer we are, we know that the electric field is directly proportional, inversely proportional to the um, distance squared, and hence that squared gives us a incremental increase each time. Okay, so if we look at a negative point charge, if we place a positive chest charge anywhere around it, it will be attracted towards it the further away the test charge is the weaker the field but the closer that test charge is the stronger the field hence the equipotential lines are closer okay so electric field strength we have now defined that electric field strength as the force per um, acting on a unit of positive charge placed in a point in a field and measured in newton per coulomb as we've seen in chapter 8 now, since we know there are two formulas now, the one is that um, the force is equal to the magnitude of the two charges divided by the distance between them squared, and the field due to one of those charges is equal to the force times the magnitude of that charge. When we combine these two equations, okay, the force we can equate the forces together and we know that the char second charge will cancel out we get this following formula for electric field where the electric field is the constant times the charge of the original um, point charge divided by the radius squared now if we're going to plot a graph like this if q is a positive point charge 
we get a graph that looks like this for the electric field to the radius. Now, hey, just be observe, we know that from the formula that the electric field is inversely proportional to the radius squared. But we will look in this chapter at graphs of the electric field and the radius, not radius squared. But although it's inversely proportional to the radius squared, it will still have an inverse proportionality to the radius. We use these graphs because it's going to link up with the following graph that we're going to discuss just now. So we've got E over R, and we've got an inverse proportionality. And if we look at this, this is said to create a repulsive field. So this is when I bring a positive test charge to a positive point charge, and it's repulsive. The closer the field gets, remember those green lines, to the positive test charge, the stronger the field gets. Okay, so the closer I bring my test charge to the positive charge, the stronger the field gets. And here we look at if it's a negative charge. And so if I bring my positive test charge towards a negative charge, we create a tractive field. And that is because when we get it, we don't have to do work. It is the work is being done for us. We're going to look at the work just now. Um, but the attraction gets also stronger the closer we get to it. So it's said to create an attractive field, similar like a gravitational field. Okay, so a gravitational field we know also has a similar shape if we think back at chapter 17. Okay, so guys, these are the graphs. If it's an upward E over R field then of the graph is upwards it is repulsive and if it's downwards in the fourth quadrant it is attractive so how do we use these graphs firstly if we um, the field strength around a positive charge point okay we can look at that or the field strength around a negative charge point and when we look at this in both graphs the areas shade that represents the potential difference between two positions of R1 and R2. So that means how much work I must put in to move um, a charge from R1 to R2. Now if we look at the first graph, if I have a positive test charge and I want to move it from R1 to R2, that is a repulsive graph. So it is going to be repulsed and the work there would be negative, okay, because I don't have to put in work, okay. If we look at the second graph and we look at the area from R1 to R2, that's the work done to move it from R1 to R2, to move it further away from an attractive field and therefore I do positive work. I have to put work into that system. Okay, in both graphs, the area shaded represents the potential difference. Okay, and if we look here, the area is essential, the force per unit positive charge times the distance. Okay, which is the work done per positive unit charge. Okay, so we get to the concept of electric potential. The electric potential at a certain position in the electric field is defined as the work done in bringing the unit positive charge from infinity to that point. This is measured in joules per coulomb or volts. Okay, so we know that, okay, the formula for this is the electric potential, VE is K over QR, where Q is the charge setting up the field, the sign needs to be included, okay, and R is the distance from the center of Q. Okay, so if we look at it, there's an easy way to see where this equation comes from. We've seen that E is K over times Q over R squared. And the work done, okay, the energy, remember we're looking at energy here, per unit charge, so the joules per coulomb work done, okay, is equal to the force per unit charge times the distance. So force times distance, and we know force per unit charge, um, F over Q is E. So if E times R, 
gives us the work done per unit charge, then if we combine those formulas, we can get that VE is K, Q, and then one of the R's is cancelled out. And then we just have R. The potential is essential to the electric potential energy that a one Coulomb charge would have at that point of the field. Okay, so there should be a negative in front of the E to indicate the increasing potential opposite to the field. Okay, direction, and we'll look at that a bit later. So, the electric potential, how the potential VE rises when the field uh, within the field depends on the size and the sign of the charge setting up the field. But again, the potential is taken as zero at infinity. Occasionally, to simplify problems, we take the Earth's potential as zero. Think of earthing. See the uniform electric field notes. Okay, so if Q is a positive point charge, we get the potential over the radius and we're going to get a heel. Okay, and the slope here, the gradient, gives us the negative electric field. Okay, so the slope of this graph gives us the negative electric field. And previously we saw if we had the electric field strength graph to radius, the area under the graph gives us the energy per unit charge, which is the elect uh, potential, the electric potential. On the other hand, so VE rises as you move towards the positive charge since work is done to move the one Coulomb inwards, overcoming the repulsive forces, hence all the potentials are positive. If we look at a negative point, we'll see the opposite graph here. We see a potential well. The gradient is once again, um, the potential gradient is once again equal to the um, electric field, the negative electric field, and that's because the potential, electric potential, decreases as you move it towards the negative charge since the charge would do work for us in attracting a one coulomb charge hence all potentials are negative okay electric potential energy now how do we get from electric potential to get to electric potential energy we said that electric potential is the energy per unit charge that is when we just use a test charge but if we look at a specific charge as a positive charge is moved closer to another positive charge, the electric potential energy rises, like pushing it up a potential hill. Whereas the electric potential energy would decrease if we move it closer to a negative charge, falling down a potential well. Okay. The electric potential energy of a system of two charges, Q1 and Q2, is separated by a distance R and given by the formula EPE is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 or K times the two charges and the distance squared. Now what's changed here? We have the charge of the second charge. It's not a test charge anymore. It is two specific charges. And when we have two charges of um, known magnitude, we can calculate the electric potential energy. Okay, if the charges are opposite, the electric potential energy is negative and attraction is occurring like electrons in an atom. If they are, if they are like charges, electric potential energy is positive and repulsion is occurring. Electric potential difference and energy changes. When a charge is moved between two points in the electric field, the work done or the energy change is independent of the path taken and depends only on the change in potential it experiences. Electric potential difference or change in VE between two points in the electric field is determined as the work done in moving a one Coulomb charge between the two points. So the change in energy or the work done when a charge Q is moved between the two points is the change in the electric potential energy or the charge times the electric potential of the yeah, graph. 
So here we can see the, the um, relationship between the electric potential and the electric potential energy. So when we have that charge, the second charge, and we times it with the electric potential. I hope you have an awesome day, and uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask me. Goodbye.